Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to TimeToPlay.com's mm-hmm. Empower Half Hour. Uh, the Time to Play Foundation sponsors this uh, Empower Half Hour podcast, and today's topic is Reduce Your Cancer Risk, and also just health in general. This is How to Be Healthy Week. So my name is Doreen Guma. I am a board-certified mm-hmm. healthcare executive, and I am a life coach. I started the idea behind the Time to Play Foundation that you have to be happy, healthy, have money, work-life balance to um, have a better quality of life. And I put together an amazing team, and one of our team members, Melissa Stockman, is online with us today to discuss how to be healthy uh, for week two of each month is how to be healthy week. So good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good morning. Great. How are you? Good, good. And Melissa is our medical director, and um, I've worked in healthcare for 28 years. And one of the things that I've seen people in the hospitals and or the nursing home where I have worked in the past since um, the year 2001 is the people are more sick and sad. And what grandma uh, always said was, if you don't have your health, you don't have any anything. So I, I found Melissa um, accidentally. And she is a nurse practitioner for the past 22 years. Um, she could give you a little bit more of her backgrounds and history. But she has not just, oh, here, take this pill, but she has this ability to kind of find out what is wrong, you know, what is cause of the issue. And mm-hmm. that's the most important part of things that we can do for ourselves. Is, and I call that, of course, root cause. Uh, look for the root cause. So um, today we're going to be talking about a topic that people do shy away from. Again, this is really how to be healthy in general. Uh, mm-hmm. Cancer is a after effect of potentially not being healthy or, or having... Melissa, maybe, you know, sure. we could kind of start there. Like, well, how yeah, can I you... like to... Go... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. To stress prevention and early detection. Instead of you having, like, an uncontrollable bleed and go to the doctor and get diagnosed cancer, I would rather tell people how to detect cancers earlier, which could lead to um, higher success rates and, you know, prevention of metastases where it's spread, or possibly also things we can do to prevent cancer rather than just finding out these late signs that we already have cancer. Um, I don't know if people realize this, but females have a one in eight chance of developing breast cancer. And on Long Island, it's a lot higher. Sometimes there's clusters, four or five homes together. Um, Men's risk of cancer is one in seven for prostate. But in our lifetime, women overall, as per the American Cancer Society, have a one in three risk of cancer, and men one in two. So two men in the room, statistically, one of them will develop cancer in their lifetime. Um, so, you know, I, I like to tell people ways we can possibly reduce our risks. And I think genetics is part of a, fa- is a factor in cancer that we cannot change, but the environmental factors we can, the carcinogens, those are things that are known to cause cancer. Um, I don't know, you know, where you'd like me to begin on this, but... Basically, cancer is a disease that rapidly cells uh, grow and multiply and take over our normal body tissue. And there are these things, I know we only have a half hour, so I don't get too deep into it, but free radicals are like unstable atoms that they're they're missing um, a negative charge in their shell, and they look for another free radical to gain that, and then they make that other atom, it's like um. A free radical is like an atom whose outer shell is missing a negative charge. And it looks for another atom who's stable, who has its outer shell full, to steal that electron. And then that keeps replicating. Each atom will steal from another one. And that's free radical damage, and that's how it gets started. So if we can slow down and stop that free radical damage, that's what's causing cancers and over 200 diseases today. Um and, you know, there are these known carcinogens that, like, uh, smoke, tobacco, even 
um, smokeless cigarettes now, the sun. These are things that we can try to limit our exposure to limit our free radical damage that's causing the cancers. Absolutely. One of the things I did want to bring up was, and when I said in the beginning that we have a quote unquote sicker and sadder society. Yes. Um, if we, if and and people look at me and say, "Oh, you can't say that." No, we really can. If you go on and you Google mm-hmm. the Center for Disease Control, and you look at the statistics, and just Google this: um, increase of obesity in the United States from 1985. Yeah. Yes. The statistics are tremendous. I mean, from where I actually, we had... Go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm sorry, Melissa. Uh, no, I actually have slides showing the U.S. each year yes. since the mm-hmm. 80s until now, showing more and more obesity where they actually had to add more colors in because more than 30% of those states are obese. Absolutely. And I am a New York State Department of Health Diabetes Prevention Counselor for that particular Mm -hmm. reason. I wanted to learn a little bit more about what is behind a person, um, not to adhere to recommendations, um, but also we look at, again, going into root cause. You know, some things may be in our food, and we're going to touch that too. Um, Melissa, I'd like you to touch that too, but things that have significantly changed from the year of 1985 to current. Yes. And the population um, greater than 20%, I know it's for sure, in every single state, I think except, no, every single state has greater than 20% of obesity. Mm-hmm. And um, the the ramifications of that, including potential cancers. We do actually have another caller that I'm going to put on the line in case they do have a quick sure. question. Hi, good morning, a, 302. I, you have a question? Oh. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Do you have a question? Do you have something to add that you wanted to add in? or? Okay, I guess I'll put them back on you. Maybe they changed their mind. But um, also, this is the first generation. You know, up until now, we've been living longer and longer and longer, and I think that's part of the reason we're seeing more diseases and more cancers. And each generation, their child was living longer than the parent. Up until now, this is the first generation ever where the life expectancy of the child is actually shorter than that of the parent due to the obesity. I appreciate that, and it really is mm-hmm. preventive, and that's um, why we created the Pre-Invent Your Life program, because if you know this information, I know it's hard to implement change in our lives, but mm-hmm. you know what? It's important, and it's seriously, like I said, working in healthcare for 20 years, and Melissa, even longer, um, you really would rather not be sick. It's debilitating. You can't enjoy quality of life. So let's start talking about um, some some of the preventive opportunities. Um, well, firstly, you, one thing that I want to go into first is is something simple. Like a lot of people talk about vitamins, and I know that this is a near and dear subject to your heart. Mm-hmm. Um and then we'll go into um, antioxidants and known carcinogens, kind of listing a little bit of that and a little bit of prevention extra. But I really did want to go into supplements a little bit. There's a lot of things out there on the market. There's miracle drugs. There's miracle cures. And then we get reports of how supplements are actually detrimental to your health. Um, do you believe these types of things? Because, you know, it could be the... Um, Mm -hmm. other industries, you know, giving us Mm -hmm. the wrong information. And then also what we look for in supplements as far as brands um, and quality because some things are absorbed and some things are not. And, sorry, I'm giving you a lot of things to put on your list here. Um, Sure. (laughs) About potential blood tests or something in order to determine what supplements you need because you don't need everything or do you need everything. So there you go. (laughs) <laughs> oh, which question first? Okay. Um, well, antioxidants are very important. We can we make some of our own, but we don't make enough for all the free radical damage that we're exposed to with, you know, everything from diesel exhaust, asbestos, uh, nickel even, the sun. So I believe it's important to get supplementation. I don't believe any of us can eat enough fruits and vegetables to get every single vitamin and mineral we need every single day. 
Um, I take supplementations myself. There are a lot of them out there, and a lot of the vitamins out there we cannot absorb. The molecules are too big. They clump together. They can't get in the little microvilli in our small intestine to get absorbed. Um, I think important blood tests to get for vitamin levels are vitamin D and vitamin B. Um, those are very important. If you don't get enough D, you can get tired, fatigue, you can have depression, bone thinning, you won't absorb your calcium. Vitamin B is good for anemia, memory, nerves, neuropathy. Um, I have a machine that I actually measure people's antioxidant level, not invasively in 30 seconds. It, they found it to be, according to the studies, more accurate than blood or urine. Just because we measure vitamins in our urine just means we're excreting them, not that we've absorbed them. Where with the testing I do is actually measuring it at your tissue level, at your hand, the distal most part. So it has to get through your entire arm and into your hand. Um, and then also what I would do is, you know, start someone on a supplement and I can recheck them in a month, two months, three months, see if their level's coming up. If their level is not rising, I can safely say they're not absorbing those vitamins. Um, and now a new wave, you know, we're always learning newer, better scientific technologies and, you know, cutting-edge technologies. We used to say, let's just take antioxidants, fruits, vegetables, vitamins. They fight free radicals that cause cancer and aging, which is true. But now there's something recently discovered this past few years called NRF2 activators. And actually what they do is when you ingest it, it's an herbal uh, blend, that when you ingest it, it makes your body create more of its own antioxidants instead of just ingesting the antioxidants. And one molecule of this fights like a million free radicals a second. So it's more powerful than just ingesting antioxidants for themselves. And that's these NRF2s. And actually I will have a lecture coming up on that. Um, if anyone's in New York, they can reach out to me. Uh, one this evening well, we and could one, also I believe, even November record 4. that. Yeah, maybe we yes. could even record that and do a podcast special on that that week. You know, yes. unfortunately, like I said, everything is so much information, and you go and you Google, and it's so overwhelming. Yes, um, I don't recommend you know, Googling. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And then, of course, we have our traditional doctors, um, and so many doctors are, and not to, to say anything negative about the industry, of the healthcare industry, I've worked mm-hmm. in it for the past 20 years, but, you know, our, our physicians are um, exhausted with time constraints, yes. you know, and they're not necessarily able to give you an hour or something that you maybe would need or be able to ask questions. Yes. Um, so we are an information oversaturated uh you know, world or or nation, but trying to decipher all of the different things. And again, you have the different industries that say this is good and this is not good, so they could sell product too. So that's so important. Hmm. So I know we want always to kind PubMed of people can go to. That's scientific studies that are unbiased on a third party universities, double blind placebo control. So that's like PubMed dot com. We can see a lot of the real studies that's there, a, not that's just a, That's a good one, yeah. Well, you know what, it is, and we do try to self-diagnose, but then we go and we'll we'll mm-hmm. read, you know, magazine articles too, and just like in general magazines, I'm not even talking mm-hmm. like a, you know, a, an appropriate um, health publication like PubMed or stuff like yeah. that, but, you know, it, it sometimes is a biased study. Yeah. You know, I, um, I think our health system needs an overhaul because – we're so used to, and even the way I was trained, is to diagnose and treat, not prevent. You know, we need to spend right. more of the healthcare dollars in prevention. Get the kids when before they become a teenager and start smoking. Prevention will save a lot more money in the healthcare industry and a lot more lives, but the healthcare industry is not geared that way, you know. Um, no. You know, we're taught our mammals once a year. Well, why wait 11 months to find out you have a lump? Why not tell every woman to do self-breast exams every month? That might detect it that much sooner, you know. No, and and I appreciate that. You know, when you were just saying that, like, remember I said I was diabetes prevention cancer. Yeah. There is no health reimbursement for insurance programs um, if you are looking for prevention of diabetes. So yeah. if you are um, on 
the verge of conversion for t- to type 2 diabetes, there's no prevention for diabetes mm-hmm. until you convert, and then they'll give you a nutritionist. And but they yes, don't in my experience, pre- yes, they won't even give you a nutritionist. Most insurances, unless you're an insulin-dependent diabetic, so you have to wait till exactly. the severity is high enough where you're getting, giving yourself daily injections, and then maybe you'll get a nutritionist covered. Where Which if they gave that nutritionist no. in the beginning, exactly, they might not need the insulin and all that extra healthcare. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's it's I believe between two and three um, thousand dollars a month to provide medications and other things for a person who is converted. Um, sure. So, how does that make sense for your healthcare dollars? Like you were saying, you know, what is a nutritionist two three hundred bucks or something? You know, maybe yeah. if you need it, right? So, let's look at the statistics of how much the caller is back again. Let me just check to sure. see. Hi, um, there's a phone number on here. A three zero two starts with, and I'm just wondering if you have any questions or you need something that you want to add in. No, I'm sorry. I was just trying to get back on my navigation. So sorry. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Very well. No problem. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't have something that you needed to um, question. So, okay, very good. You. Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion. <laughs> have a sure. great day. Okay, so um, let's go into the um, the known carcinogen list a little bit more. Oh, sure. Because I think that this is something that people maybe yeah. are aware of or maybe are not aware of. I, I so don't let's go so, into that a little even more. When yeah, when I looked at this list, I was amazed at some of the things on there. Now, the, there's an international agency for research on cancer, and they list carcinogens in different categories. Group one is proven known carcinogens to humans, means we know this causes cancer. And then group two is probably three is maybe, four is we really don't know. So I can go over some group one known carcinogens that I think we should all try to avoid. Um Asbestos, we've heard of that. It's in our shingles on the outside of our houses. It's in old car brakes. A lot of mechanics were exposed to it over the years, changing brakes. Um, Coal. Diesel exhaust is a known carcinogen. There's so many guys out there that are buying diesel trucks. I don't think they have any idea. Mm -hmm. I think their wives would not let them buy the diesel trucks if they had known. Um, Tobacco, not not only... um, the smoke tobacco, but even the cigarette, the uh, electric cigarettes. Um, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is in a lot of, like, I think of those Brazilian treatments. The heavy conditioners and straighteners mm-hmm. have formaldehyde, yes. or some of them have chemicals that convert to formaldehyde when heated. Um, isopropyl alcohol. It's not rubbing alcohol. Mineral yes. oil. Mineral and oil. we put it in, and we put it on babies. <laughs> Bellies, yes, and isopropyl health powder. Yes, we put that on the babies. Nickel is in a lot of women's jewelry. We don't even realize it. Sometimes it's under the silver, um, the sun, wood dust, suit, um, and they, they know it is salted fish. Quote Chinese style. I don't know exactly what they meant, but I guess the way certain fishes are preserved and salted was a known carcinogen. Mm. And that's just some of the common ones. The list goes on and on. Other ones that you might want to ask your doctor for these blood tests, hepatitis B and hepatitis C are known carcinogens. I have seen patients that refuse hep C treatment and it converts to liver cancer. So early detection of those and treatments will reduce their cancer risk. HIV is a known carcinogen. Um, H. pylori is bacteria in the stomach that can cause heartburn, reflux, ulcers. You can ask Mm -hmm. your doctor for that blood test as well. And even the HPV virus that a lot of women get detected on their annual PAP is a known carcinogen to cause uh, cervical cancer. So some of those you can ask your doctor to be tested for, Hep B, Hep C, HIV, H. pylori, and your PAP smear. No, I, I, I appreciate those. So let's just flip to... Um, well, I know you have the, the secondary, second level of antioxidants. What is stuff, I mean, formaldehyde is very interesting. It was in a lot of makeups, 
um, mm-hmm. nail polishes. I know it's been removed from a lot of different things. Um, it's a preservative, of course. We know it's formaldehyde. But what is mm-hmm. maybe some other that are a little bit more common? Is there anything else besides um, those that are like day-to-day those were, functional? Oh, those are the most common. But other ones include like when you go for x-rays. You know, if a lot of people, patients in my mill come in, they'll be like, oh, my back hurts, I need an x-ray. And I'm like, an x-ray is only going to show the bones. Unless you think you fractured your back, there might not be a point in that x-ray. So x-rays, unnecessary CAT scans, um, the sun, there's just so many carcinogens that I think we can avoid every day. Um, you know, because... Um, I can go into f- further ones, but I think those are pretty much the heavy no, hitters. No, that's, that's fine. I mean, people can easily Google, and I understand, and you were discussing how the antioxidants kind of coat and um, care okay. for the cells, and um, yes. they go against, you know, the, those uh, carcinogens and the free radicals that those carcinogens make yes. that are in our bodies. So fruits and vegetables, we know. So yeah. talk about, I guess, some primary sure. antioxidants that we could uh, day-to-day, again, use. Because we need to make things easy. You know, yes. we do need to make things easy. If it's too difficult, we just can't. It's it's too much. We're too busy. So Yes. Okay. Well, um, okay, we have this free radical damage from being exposed to all these carcinogens. And we need to stop it because each free radical will create another one and another one, and it's a whole chain reaction. We can make our own antioxidants to some extent, but not enough for the free radical damage that we're exposed to in a lifetime with microwaves and even flying. There's radiation and flying. Um, So antioxidants, each antioxidant molecule will fight like one free radical, and antioxidants are in your fruits and vegetables. If they're raw and they're organic, you get more of the vitamins. When you cook the vegetables, um, it kills, it denatures some of the nutrients. And when um, you spray insecticides and pesticides on your fruits and vegetables, it ruins some of the nutrients. So we do like war and organic is better. It could be more costly for you. The freshly, the brightly colored fruits and vegetables have a lot of antioxidants in them. And there's all different types. And it's important that we get all different types of antioxidants in just each day because they all do different things. Like vitamin C stops the chain reaction. Vitamin E is good for heart disease and other things. So a wide variety is good. Carotenoids are a group of antioxidants that are very important, and they come from mostly the yellow, orange, and red pigmented vegetables, like your yellow, orange, and red peppers. Carrots have a lot of carotenoids in them. Um, And those are found to be like beta-carotene, lycopene, lutein, xanthine, have been very good for um, eye health and slowing down aging of the eyes themselves. Um, Also, they can be found in, um, lycopene can be found in tomatoes, um, lutein and xanthine. There's a lot of studies that show their eye eye protective effects. And same with the beta carotene that's in carrots. Um, And, you know, just fruits and vegetables. The berries are good. Sources of antioxidants are all the berries, wild berries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, other citrus fruits, plums, grapes, nectarines, um, sweet potatoes. Um, They all have different antioxidants that are important for us. Um, Even nuts, walnuts, pistachios, all the different nuts. Um, The peppers, red cabbage, kale is very good, broccoli, asparagus. And, you know, I can do another discussion on which ones are good for what. Xanthine is in um, the leafy greens, egg yolks, corn, nectars, oranges, papayas, squash. So basically just eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. We can never memorize which ones have which vitamins for us. Um, There was something called an ORAC score where they rated how many antioxidants in each fruit and vegetable. But I found that's really inaccurate because it depends. If that vegetable is then cooked, it's going to lower the antioxidant content or the food is frozen. So I don't really think the ORAC score is that accurate. And it's very interesting because, you know, again, we go back and forth of this is bad for you, this is good for you, this is bad for you. Every day Mm -hmm. there's a new study, there's a new thing, but it also, oh, that was what I was going to say before and I totally forgot. I learned 
the um, dairy, so the USDA, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I always was like, you know, thought, wow, this is good. These people looking out. No, it's actually a like a buying group kind of thing, representing. Mm-hmm. The different organizations, the USDA approved, you know, you hear this, it's really not um, like looking out for our best interests. So we have Mm -hmm. to really do research and we really have to um, find what is the best for us because we're the most important, right? So um, like the scores, like you're saying, and like there was a thing about potatoes and sweet potatoes. Um, the World Health Organization actually uh, voted sweet potatoes as being like a perfect food. Whether or not that's valid or not valid, I mean, it's got all sorts <laughs> of, of great antioxidants, right? It's, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it has a lot of carbs, too. So, yes, you're getting the vitamins, but you're getting your carbs. <laughs> right, but you know, healthy carbs versus potato mm-hmm. chips, which, you know, yes. I mean, certainly there's choices that we need to make. Um, regarding the expensive nature of organic, depending on what you purchase, it's not necessarily too much more expensive. And somebody said to me a long time ago, you either pay now or you pay later. Pay later. That's and very good. I like that. You put, Yeah, you put that into perspective. So it costs you an extra 25 cents to buy, you know, something that's more healthy. Um, There's also stuff to consider as well. Like um, I'm very careful what meats I purchase. Um, There's a lot of antibiotics in meat. There was um, articles, and you could Google, uh, you know, hopefully I don't get in trouble, but saying like Tyson chicken years ago, I don't know if it's still true, had been putting arsenic in their chicken to plump up the chicken's and make them, um, you know, more yeah. profitable for them. So we look at well, the I- items. You're putting this in your mouth. So whatever you're eating is affecting, you know, your physical body function as well. So I think a lot of the farms were giving steroids to the animals to make them more body weight. So then, you know, that sells mm-hmm. for more because they're getting paid per pound. And then, like you said, with the antibiotics, now you might be allergic to penicillin. That chicken was getting from penicillin and you're eating that chicken. How do you know you're not going to have that allergic reaction? Um, those Absolutely. antibiotics are given. So they figured if they just give every chicken the antibiotic, then they're not going to get sick and they're going to save money. Um, it's just, And, you know, recently I've seen... Yeah. I've I've seen a lot of eggs that I'm opening that are double yolks. And one dozen I had, almost every egg was a double yolk. Now tell me they're not doing something to the eggs. (laughs) I mean, almost every egg be a twin. (laughs) Well, we only eat organic eggs, Um, only Mm. eat organic eggs. I only eat certain things um, like our milk years ago. And and seriously, I I put this into perspective. My husband is 5'5", I'm 5'2". And our children are gigantic. Now, <laughs> knowing they are, I mean, my Nicholas is like 5'11". My Gregory is like 5'10". I mean, they're big. Nick has like a size mm-hmm. 13 foot. I mean, they're big. So um, years ago, it's tea in it. And mm-hmm. it was a growth hormone. Uh, the, the milk had it because the cows wow. had it. And it went into the milk. So I attribute... Part of their, um, I mean, there is a genetic going back, back, back some generations. The D'Agostino side of our family did have very taller people, you know, taller wow. people. But, you know, chances are, I mean, it's it, we're just a small little Sicilian family, you know. So, but <laughs> you put into perspective, seriously, mm-hmm. think about it. If, yeah, if there's no, growth right, hormone right. in the milk wow. and you're ingesting the growth hormone, What's going to happen? So we really have to look. I, I'll go food shopping. Sometimes it takes me, I'm serious, like three hours. Like I read everything. Um, you know, genetically modified food is just really not high on my list. We don't know what it's going to do to us. You know, you're eating. It, you've heard we are what we eat, you know, put into perspective. And, and we're not a 1,000% perfect in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, I think a little bit more perfect is better than not perfect at all. You know, yeah. um, just a little preventive. 
So we talked about um, supplements. We talked about some blood tests. We talked about carcinogens. We talked about statistics and antioxidants. Are there any other preventive tips and tools that people can just in their everyday life you know, implement. Again, it has to be easy because if it's not easy, we're not going to do it. I I speak for myself personally as sure. well. Um, I definitely believe in supplementation so they can get a quality vitamin. Um, I personally, I I take a lot of herbs and a lot of vitamins. Um, the vitamins I take, the, the company actually money that guarantees them to be absorbed. So you want a you know good quality vitamin like that. I personally, I also take green tea every day. Each capsule I take equals seven cups of green tea without the caffeine, and I take six a day. That's like 42 cups of green tea. Green tea is a very potent antioxidant. However, you know, there's caffeine in each cup you take, so I would rather take it in capsule form without the caffeine or anything else. And other things that people might be able to take is an NRF2 activator. This is the new... This is like the new antioxidants. It's like the new, better, hey, it's just been out a few years. And every few years, there's more and more um, evolution on, you know, what's better and coming out and the next best thing. So the NRF2 activators are almost like the iPad 22. It's not even out yet, you know. Um, there's a lot of studies behind them that people can see on PubMed. Um but also self-rest exams every month, asking for their mammal every year, making sure they get their pap every year, colonoscopy if they're over 50, if they're a uh, male, uh, PSA test over 40. I think those are very important. If you have family history or symptoms, get those tests sooner. Um, you know, there's also MRIs for breasts now that are more sensitive to women that have dense, dense breast tissue. I think those are the important things, and just staying away from the known carcinogens. Very good. Okay, so there's a couple, two two more little quick things that I want to just, well, one more thing and then just kind of a sum up. Sure. Um, because of, like I said, I, I kind of chose you because of your philosophy and your look for root cause and your proactive preventive methods. You do do prescribe, you know, regular traditional medicine too, I understand. Yeah. I feel that it's important to find a practitioner that you relate to, that you can talk to, that you feel confident, you know, uh, with, and how can we give somebody um, a guidance? Because I've, you know, like even in our community, the traditional medicine rules here, and traditional medicine is, oh, doctor, my arm hurts. Oh, well, here's you know, uh, ibuprofen. So mm-hmm. how do you find a practitioner that would be a little bit more proactive um, to help a person? Yeah, that's a good question. I, <laughs> I guess they can call me. Um, it, it's hard. I think you really have to interview your doctors, you know. I don't know if you can ask a lot of questions on the phone, if, you know, they're open to that, or set an appointment and just interview them as if they're on a job interview to see if they Mm -hmm. want to be, you know, if they'll do a good job. Um, You know, I think it's important to practice what you preach. You know, there's heavy doctors telling heavy patients to lose weight. (laughs) Right. You know, um, but I think you can try to interview, you know, get some information online, see if the nurse practitioner or doctor will call you back and answer your questions. Or if not, at least just go there for a consult. But I think it's also word of mouth. You can get more information from who your friends and family have used, like, not used. I like combining traditional Western medicine, like the doctors do, with Eastern holistic alternatives, because I think there's good in both. And I find most practitioners are one extreme or the other. Either they're just traditional Western medicine and, oh, herbs don't work, or they're so far holistic that they're like, oh, you don't need blood work. And I think there's good to come out of both. So I, I love practicing both. And, you know, I appreciate I think each that. Each can learn much. from the other. Yeah. And the other thing is too, um, with cancers, you know, get a good oral screen every year. And skin cancer, if you see anything on your body that might have changed size, color, shape, if it's multicolored, if it's irregular bordered, if it's now raised, if it's not healing, I just saw a patient this past week came in for something else, and then I saw this on her forehead, and they're like, "Oh yeah, she's had it for months. It just doesn't heal." And you know, I can't guarantee, but 99% sure I'm skin, it's skin cancer. I sent her for a biopsy. Right. So if you have a wound that's not healing, especially on your face, which is the most sun-exposed area, 
please go to a, a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon for a biopsy or even your primary. I appreciate that. So with that, um, I just wanted to mention that on the timetoplay.com, there is an article that Melissa has written. It's part one. We're going to post part two of the, um, you know, cancer prevention information. So please go and check that out. Um, If you have questions, you're welcome to either call us at 631-331-2675, suggestions, things you need, what you're looking for in order to have a better quality of life, and we'll see what we could do to implement that because our philosophy is people helping people and collaboration equals success. Our email is info at timetoplay.com. Uh, T-I-M-E-T-O-P-L-A-Y dot com. Go on Time to Play. It is a hub of resources for people to enjoy life. And this podcast is made possible by the Time to Play Foundation, a 501c3 not-for-profit corporation with the mission and purpose to enrich the lives of others through programs, public awareness, outreach activities, events, and learning opportunities that further the concept of enjoying life. So in a short nutshell, we're inspiring everyone to enjoy life, and we are Enjoy Life Advocates. So, Melissa, do you have anything else that you want to add and or contact information? People can contact you through us, and we'll be happy to pass along if somebody needs some information as well. Sure, or I guess they could email me at rejuvn8, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, at AOL.com, or um, I guess, yeah, I guess that would be the best. But Or even call uh, 631-275-3465. That's 631-275-3465. So we're here to work together to help everybody um, learn what they need to know so they can enjoy life. And we're certainly not all knowing people, but certainly, um, you know, looking for people to work together and collaborate so we can all enjoy life. So that, with that being said, we're going to end our, our health week this week. Um, please go on timetoplay.com and you can look up radio podcasts. Next week is Half Money Week, so we have a very interesting topic of um, to uh, take money advice from. Uh, So it's probably going to be a little bit of an interesting uh, idea there. And um, that's about it. Anything you guys need, please let us know. And thank you, Melissa, for your time this morning. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all you you. do for for so many. There's also a web if they want to find a nurse practitioner in their area, npfinder.com. You can click on by state and find a nurse practitioner in your area. That's a very good thing, and thank you for that. You know, unfortunately, like I said, in my experience, and there was a, I mean, we need to hang up at this point, but um, there was a doctor search I was doing a few years ago, and my husband at that time was on three different statins. I started reading information about statins and how detrimental they are. Um, I believe they're contributory to different disease processes, including Mm -hmm. um, like a dementia, Um, but that's me, my belief, my research, um, you can look into that on your own. But I called the doctor, it was a, a doctor, a DO, it was not an MD, DO, which is what I believe to be more holistic um, combined. And I said, you know, would you keep him on the statins? And they're like, absolutely. So that's not what I was looking for. And we did find somebody mm. who did take him off of that. You know, there are other alternatives. We don't have yeah. to, you know, um, there's things called clinical pathways. And everybody that has this XYZ presentation is given this medication. Well, guess what? It's not necessarily the right thing for everybody. So mm-hmm. know what's right for you and find a person like Melissa who is very proactive. You. And, you know, that's that's the whole point. You know, we don't want to just be a number. We want to be ourselves and to take care of ourselves and stay as healthy as we can for as long as we can. That's the key. Excellent. So, yes. And there, there are so many alternatives to, like, statins, like diet, like fish oils, omega-3s. Um, and also the statins, sometimes we do need them, but they deplete your natural CoQ10, which a lot of the physicians will not tell you to also supplement it with additional CoQ10. And mm-hmm. coach you to ten is exactly. important for a lot of, you know, a lot of things too. Okay, I appreciate that. We'll have to. Yeah, no, it's just, 
we'll have to do another health week, of course, the um, third uh, Wednesday. Happy healthy second Wednesday of each month. Um, The schedule is, again, on the radio podcast link on the Time to Play website. So uh, we'll schedule something for next month, and we'll come up with a great topic and how to be healthy. And thank you so much. So And thank you for all you do with Time to Play. Well, I'm trying. And for the you know, community. Well, I appreciate that. So um, yeah. it's time I to enjoy you. life. It's time to play. And um, have a great week. And thank you again, right, Alyssa. You too. Thank you. Sure. Bye-bye.